Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, y'all. We're getting back to our Sunday school lessons. Um, hopefully, you can see me. You can see what you need to see. I'm at my kitchen table, which is a little tore up, but that's okay. Because we're studying God's Word. So, the first lesson of December is going to be... I'll read it for you. It's going to be the promise of Messiah's forerunner. Okay. So when it starts off these subjects like this, that means the most of the subjects gonna be the promise. Um, yep, so he's gonna have promise and God's promise. Okay, yep. So that is the gist of the theme for these. Because last last um term it was obedience. Which it was obedience. So we're using the old testament. Y'all know it's all about the law. This is the New Testament, the promise, grace, mercy. Okay. So what people have to realize too is in these books. Sorry, that's my husband. In these books, they have these daily reads and they, and they correlate with the lesson. So Monday is a promise to Abraham and Sarah, Genesis 18, 9 and 15. If you don't know, I'm pretty sure we all know that story. But we're gonna read it. Because you can say that and some people have never read the Bible before, and so you cannot assume that everybody knows certain things. Even people who have read the Bible before miss things. I've missed things. So, I'm going to go to 18. Okay. So, it's going to be 18, 9, and 15. I'm going to start reading. Okay. It's this whole section. Sarah laughs. Okay. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he answered. The Lord said, I will certainly come back to you in about a year's time, and your wife Sarah will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent behind him. Ain't that like a woman eavesdropping? My goodness. Abraham and Sarah were old and getting on in years. Sarah had passed the age of childbearing, so she was old. So she laughed to herself. After I am worn out and my Lord is old, Will I have the light? Mm. But the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh, saying, can I really have a baby when I'm old? Is anything impossible for the Lord? Good question. At the appointed time, I will come back to you. In about a year, she will have a son. Sarah denied it. I did not laugh, she said, because she was afraid. But he replied, no, you did laugh. Well, Y'all better stop playing with God. And this is the... um. CSB version. I probably should have read King James, so I apologize. Um, this is like my go-to Bible. Okay, so this was a promise that God given them, and they, I'm not going to say they, but they are one. She kind of like, there's no way. And to me, this just shows how much all of us as humans, no matter if we're Christians or not, put God in a box. We tell him what he can't do when he's the creator of all things. I feel like we have a tendency of doing that, you know. Um, my pastor preached on the image of God. He started in Genesis 3, I want to say. And he was just talking about how we are made in his image and his likeness. And when our image is starting to change or we're not seeing him in our image or our imagination. Because we uh, image is the root word of imagination, okay. So image is a visual Okay, that's why we like movies. That's like we like to see aesthetics. It's a visual of something that we like to see that gets us excited. So when your image or your visual starts to change, that's when you start messing up. Because if we're made in his image and his likeness from the get-go, what causes that image to change? Sin or things that we have seen, things that we have learned as for example, children. Children do everything that we see. I'll give an example of a little girl grabbing a baby doll. You know, my daughter just did it this weekend. She just like was so into her baby doll this weekend and taking her baby everywhere that we went and putting her in her car seat. And then my son talks about being a truck driver because that's what his dad does. You know what I'm saying? He just, it's like they're doing what they see, you know? all the time even the way that they speak and the manner that they speak their dialect is the way that we talk so i want to look back and just look at first of all my problem with sarah 
and God still blessed them. She denied. That means she lied. They trying to be nice. She lied. And she wrong for that. Very much wrong. You don't lie to God. And she obviously knew who it was because Sarah denied it. I did not laugh, she said, because she was afraid. But he replied, no, you did laugh. You tried to play me. Now, in verse or chapter 18, it tells you about the three visitors. And I'm going to read it verbatim because I don't want to just say like it was God, but it was, they had to be angels of the Lord. Um, the Lord appeared to Abraham at the Oaks of Mary, Mary Re, while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent during the heat of the day. He looked up and he saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to meet them, bowed to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have found favor with you, please do not go on past your servant. Let a little water be brought that you may wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. I will bring a bit of bread so that you may strengthen yourselves. This is why you have passed your servant's way. Later, you can continue on. Yes, they replied. Do as you have said. So Abraham hurried on into the tent and said, Sarah, quick, knead three measures of fine flour and make bread. Abraham ran to the herd, herd and got a tender choice calf. He gave it to a young man who hurried to prepare it. But Abraham took curds and milk as well as the calf that he had prepared and set them before the men. He served them as they ate under the tree. He did his thing. He sent, he sent the um, meat to go get done and everything. Wow, it's almost like <laughs> he had somebody, uh, like a chef or something, prepare the meat. Let's see. Prepare it. Yeah, he said prepare it. That's interesting. Get out there. They stayed there a little while, didn't they? Hmm. So, we're going to go over here to the lesson. This lesson, if you would like to read it, starts from Luke 1, the 8th verse, all the way to the 20th verse. And it said, it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his horse, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall be bear a, there, thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great <clears throat> in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. I'm drinking no wine. I got, I got half a pick. I don't know why, but she's been drinking. No, this is for their son. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about um John the Baptist. There we go. Uh, he shall drink no wine. Because I was about to say, I don't remember talking about Jesus drinking no wine. And I don't think he did, but you know. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. We know that when he met Mary, well, the cousins met, and John leaped in the womb. And I'm pretty sure they're going to talk about that. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power Elias to turn. And I think... And I'm going to look in my Bible, but I think that is equivalent to it. I could be wrong, Elijah. Let me get a look. I just want to be sure. Do a lot of reading. Verse 8. Um, look. Okay. When his division was on duty, he was serving as priest before God. Oh, I'm reading the wrong one. Let me see. Verse 17. Okay. Yeah, there it is. And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. So, this is how they have it. Elisa, Elias, Elias. Same thing as Elijah. 
scary because you know we change things in American terms to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. The wisdom of the just. Mm -hmm. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. And I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. I got to get that one. Got to highlight that. Thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak. Wow. Until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled because he did not believe because is that crazy? It's trying to show you in Genesis. Um, I forgot what verse. Genesis eighteen, yeah. Genesis eighteen nine fifteen. The same thing happened to Sarah. They were punished for not believing God's word. Um, yes, they they got them. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm thinking about Sarah. I'm trying to figure out what she actually punished. I know they was like, why does she laugh? Like, what's funny about that? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go back and read it. This is what Sunday school is all about. You have to study it. And that's why it gives you a week worth of studying. Um, is she lucky she didn't get to go down? God had favor on her because baby, you laugh and then lied. Sarah denied it. I did not laugh. But it is showing how people and it happened to both parties because Elizabeth was old. Sarah was old. Very old in age. Their husbands had to be as old as them because a lot of times back in that time still to this day, the men are older than the women. So, and I mean like gaps older. So it had to have been that <clears throat> they were way older for real. But I don't know why Sarah didn't really... I don't know if she got in trouble for it. I, I mean, you don't never know everything that happened. Maybe she got in trouble in a different way. They just didn't put it in the Bible. But it just seemed like Zachariah got in trouble. trouble. He said, you're going to be dumb. And you ain't going to talk. Mm-hmm. And dumb usually means... I think when you like are not talking and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to look up the word dumb. And I... Probably will tomorrow have it in a different sense done. Temporarily unable or unwilling to speak. Yeah. It means you. Yeah. So you just. You're silent. God is amazing though. He gives you two words. So you can understand. Dump. And you will not be able to speak. Just for the people in the back. Okay. Yeah. So. That is all for today. We're going to get into it more. We're still going to be reading the scripture. But we're going to read the reading for Tuesday and compare it to this. Okay. I love you guys. Have a blessed day. I hope y'all have an awesome week. And I hope you learn something from this. And I thank God. Let's pray a little bit. Father God, we thank you for this day. You are awesome. You are omnipotent. You are great. Um, you're the creator of all things. And we know that, God. Like Paul has said, it's evidence everywhere that you are real and that you're on this earth. And that you created all things. We see the wind. We see the trees. We see things that's growing. Yesterday we read Leviticus, God, and it just shows us that you will provide in the Sabbath year and the Jubilee year. You will provide. Even when we're not working, God, you still work. And Lord, we thank you for that, God. I believe that everybody that's watching today, that you bless their hearts and their mind, God, and renew them a right spirit within you, God that is deep within them, that whatever that they do, you still show through them. Even when their emotions don't match up with their inside, God, we pray that you pray, 
put on motion on them so they can respond in a, the right manner, God. Lord, we thank you for all things. I love you, Lord. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my husband. And I thank you for bestowing a path on me where I got to know you, God, in an easy path, God. It wasn't hard for me, Lord, God, and I thank you for that. And Lord, I thank you for the people whom I have a hard path, God, and I pray that they get to you, Lord Jesus. It's your, your purpose and your will, God. Everything you do, you do it for a reason. Your thoughts are not our thoughts, God, and I thank you for that. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a good week for everybody, financially, mentally, and spiritually. Right now, in the name of Jesus, amen. Bye-bye.